Okay. Now that we've introduced the work energy method, let's give us some examples. Okay. Now let's just recap. Work energy equation is change of kinetic energy equals work going from one to two. Okay. One is the initial position, and two is the final position. Okay. So the total change of kinetic energy equals the total work done during this process. Okay? So energy, work. Okay? Kinetic energy is defined as one half mv squared, mass times velocity squared. Work done during this, this uh, process, going from one to two, equals integral of force dot ds. Okay? Force vector dot product dotted with the change position. Okay? And just keep in mind, it's the only forces that do work that count here. Okay? No, forces that do work. Not all forces do work. Okay? And this is an example, um, and you see what kind of forces do work. Okay, <clears throat> the general solution procedure. Okay? Step one, just like the unicycle law method, you choose a coordinate system, okay? Whether it's Cartesian coordinate, IJK, or tangent normal, or radial transverse coordinate system, okay? Next, you draw a free body diagram, okay? You draw a free body diagram for your object before and after, okay? At position one and position two. Next, you apply the work energy equation for each particle. Okay? Now, sometimes you do need to bring in Newton's second law. Okay? In that case, you draw free body diagram and kinetic diagram okay, for each particle. And then you count whether the number of equations equals the number of unknowns. If not, you bring in kinematics. Okay? So this is a very logical procedure to solve for um, kinetics type problem using work energy method. Okay? Now before we get into an example, I want to explain a little bit about dot product. Okay? Since here we have force dot ds. Okay? Force vector dotted with this change of position vector. What does that mean physically? Now look at this. You have a force vector, okay, pointing at an angle. And then you have this position vector, S, pointing at the different angle. This dot product, F dot S, physically means that you take the component of this F in the S direction. Okay, let's call it um, Fx. Okay. If I define horizontal as x direction, going to the right. Okay. So s vector is going in x direction. So if I decompose this f vector in the direction of s, okay, which is in the x direction, so I'm going to call fx. And the angle is called theta. So this dot product f dot s physically means f x value, okay, just the magnitude of the scalar, okay, times the magnitude of s. That's it, okay. So simply, it just means that you take the x component, okay, the component of this f vector in this s direction, which is fx in this case. Multiply that by the magnitude of the second vector, s, right here. Okay? That's it. Okay? Now, this also equals to f cosine theta. Okay? And this is the x component. Okay? Times s. Okay? So, you can rewrite this as f times s times cosine theta. Same thing. Okay? 
So that product simply just means you take the projection of one vector onto the direction of the second vector, and then take the um, the magnitude of these two vectors, okay, um, and multiply them together, okay. So you take the magnitude of this vector, multiply it by the magnitude of the projected okay, value of this, this other vector. Okay. So with this introduced, let's look at an example.